yeah, that one right there, our sigma, we're going to add up the xw's. Add up the xw's for me. Hey, have you added the, uh, all the XW's, X times W's? Did you get that yet? Mm -hmm. Add them all up, how much do you have? 82.85. Perfect. Here's the last little bit. In order to find the mean, this is a sample, sample mean. What we're going to do is we're going to take the sum of your X times W's divided by the sum of the W's, the weights. So what you need to do is figure out how much this all adds up to. Now this one's going to be pretty easy. How much does this all add up to? Okay, so if we do this, divide by 100, we're going to have 82.85 divided by 100. Of course, dividing by 100 in this case is very easy. It's just moving our decimal place two spots to the left. We get a point eight two eight five, and that's your grade out of a out of one. So that's your the proportion of your grade right there. So as a percentage, you could change it to a percentage, right? Change the percentage by pretty much undoing this step, changing it back to eighty two point eight five. That's your grade in this class. You would have an, about an eighty three percent. So you'd have a middle of the road B. Does this make sense to you? Now, this seems a little weird. Why in the world would you divide by 100? Well, this doesn't have to be out of 100%. I mean, you could figure out what your grade is at any given time. Have we honestly taken all these? Have we done all this stuff? No. No? So if you didn't do, if you didn't do th this much, could we figure out what your grade is after, your first, uh, after the homework that you've done and the first two tests? Could you do that? Okay, if, you, if we wanted to do that, we would just erase this stuff. Can someone add that for me as I'm doing? I'm going to add this up. This will be 55. So we'll be dividing by 55 here. So if we do this a little differently, if we just say, I want to figure out what my grade is after my first two tests and the homework that I've done so far, you're going to take these point values, multiply them by their respective weights, we'll figure out what that is, we'll add them together, 42.1, then we divide not by 100, because you haven't done everything yet, right? You've only done, well, the weighted version is only 55%, so we'll take the 42.1, divide that by 55, how much is that? Hey, what does point seven six five four mean to you? Yeah, it does. That means a C. Because this is a, around 76, 77 percent, 76.5 percent. So using this, you can calculate your grade for this class at any time. You can just see, figure out how many points you have out of how many we've, we've done total. Figure out this version of it, which I showed you how to do right at the beginning. Multiply by the appropriate weight, add it together, and divide by the weight that you've accomplished so far in this class. If you've done the first two tests, you've accomplished 55% of it. How many people understood how to, how to do that? Real similar to a frequency distribution, follow pretty much the same pattern, and we have to think that. Okay, the last thing we got to do in this section, I have talked about something called skewness. Have you ever heard of skewness before? You have now. Skewed. We talked about normal. Do you remember what normal meant? Normal, like on a, on a graph, meant that if you look at it horizontally, the graph has a tail on the left and a tail on the right, but it's pretty darn symmetrical. It goes up to some value that most items are, are around, so most of our data is in this range, 
We have a few outlying pieces of data, but it's pretty bell-shaped curve. Actually, that's a really awful bell shape. I'm going to try to do better. I'm not very good at this. That's it. That's a normal curve. We're pretty close to normal. We also have two other options, well not options, but two other scenarios that we could have. If it's not normal, it's most likely going to be skewed one way. A skew is like a lean, like where, where it's hit, where we have more outliers. So for instance, do you see how this tail is kind of starts out a little bit steep? Let's make it steeper. Like that. Starts out steep, and then you have this long tail on the right hand side. That tail on the right hand side, that says to me right here that while most of the data is here, I have a few really large numbers that are skewing the data. Those are called, called outliers. You remember talking about outliers last time? Do you remember that? Outliers skew your data. Outliers say, okay, most of it's normal, but then I have some pieces of data way out here that's making my tail push to the right. This is called tail right or skew right. No, I, I know you want to say left because most of the day is left, but we look where the tail's at. So skew right. Or skewed to the right. What that means is you have outliers on the right side of your data, the larger side. We also have the other situation. We could have tail left or skew left. This means that most of the data is normal in one area, but we have some outliers on the left-hand side of our data, the smaller side. So from this, can you take a look at some graphs and figure out whether it's normal or skewed left or skewed right? You might even be able to do this with just data, like a frequency distribution, and look at it and see whether it's skewed left or skewed right. The one that we did with age. Uh, remember the one we did with age where we made the histogram up? That was definitely skewed right because we had a, a large number here and it skewed off this way. That was skewed to the right. Oh, by the way, let's see. Oh, I hope this works. Would you like to see how to do mean, median, and mode on your calculators if you have a nice calculator like that one? Would you like to see that? How many people have a graphing calculator right here? Okay, it's worth me doing then. Um, well, it's like two of you. I'm not going to do it. You're trying to move something like this, but it feels like you're going the wrong way. It's so strange. Does that trip you up? <laughs> it's so fast. <laughs> uh, let's turn some lights on too. Maybe that'll help a little bit. Give it a second. There you go. Can you see this? Yeah. Can you see the little blink thing? <laughs> Follow me along with your calculators. All the TIs will be very much the same, unless you have TI-89, that's a little bit different, I'll show you that later. What I want you to do is go to where it says STAT, because hey, what class are we in? Awesome. Go to STAT. Right now you'll see that the number one is highlighted, that's the edit button. What this does, if you click enter right now, it's going to bring you to your list of lists. 
the other lists. You have list one, list two, list three up at the top. You can enter data from here. So let's pick some numbers. I'll pick the numbers, plug these in with me. Nine. You can press enter or down. You see where I'm pointing? Either enter or down. Nine, five, two, six, seven, nine, nine, one, five. Let's pick those those numbers. Right here you're gonna You'll be able to scroll back through your list, pick those numbers out. It says you have 10 items in your list right now. Have you all been able to punch those numbers into your calculator as you were going? Is everybody with me on those? Okay. This is kind of cool. What I want you to do now, press the stat button again. It'll take you back to your original screen that we started with statistics. Now, your numbers are still in that list, okay? They're not lost anywhere. They'll be there until you go back and erase them. It's stored in your memory. I want you to go over to calc. Calc means calculate, not calculus, unfortunately, because that would be awesome. Uh, it means calculate. So we're going to go over to calculate, and you're going to do what's called one variable statistics. It's the first thing highlighted. Press enter. It'll already have a, it might not look exactly like that. Um, it might look a little bit different. It might not have this information. It might just say, uh, one variable stats and then have a room for you to type something in. Do you see that? Okay, if that's the case, can I see your calculator? If this, why is your calculator blurry? It's hard. There we go. So one, if it says something like that on your screen, what you're going to do, you probably can put, press enter and be just fine. I think that'll work. Uh, but if you want to make sure, do you see this? See down here where it says the yellow L1, or you'll have something similar on your screen. Do you see that? You're going to press second. That's how you get to that part of it. Second gives you, in this case, the gold letters. Press the number two. How did I press the wrong one? Sorry. Um, Press the number one for L1, that'll give you your first list, and your screen should look like that. Are you with me on this, folks, so far? Not sure if you are. If you, don't, if you have a calculator, you're not right here. Now, after that, since you have one variable statistics, L1, all you gotta do is press enter. On this calculator, All you have to do is press enter, enter again, enter again, and it does the same thing. Okay, it says up at the top one variable statistics. Now, can you see all the information this gives you? This, without doing a whole bunch of work, is going to give you what's that? What's this? Mean? That means the mean. That's what type of mean? <coughs> Sample mean. Great. It doesn't have the population mean because those numbers are the same. You have to know what's population, what's not. This is the sum of your of everything. If you add it all up, you'd get 53. That's kind of cool. We'll actually be using that later. Um, if you add up all the, the data items squared, we'll be using that later, as a matter of fact. They'll give that to you. Uh, these two, two things right here we'll talk about in the later part of today. We will get there. Um, it tells you the number of items you have in your list. Apparently, I, was, I guess I, I was off by one day at nine. I got that wrong. If you scroll down, it will give you your minimum, what's called a quartile, we'll talk about that next time. The median, which you had to put data in order to get that, right? That's annoying, I mean you can do it right from here. Median, Q3, and the maximum, all within just like four pushes of the button. You put all your data in, for any data, decimals, whole numbers, doesn't really matter, negatives, positives, whatever. Put it all in your list, you press stat, calc, one variable statistics, enter, it does it all for you. Is that not cool? It's awesome. If you forget how to do this, where can you find this information again? Oh, You're so smart. Okay. So that was neato. We can do that. First time it's actually worked for me, like without any problems, ever. It's fantastic. 
So do you feel good, good about finding mean, median, mode, making up frequency distributions, calculating the mean of those frequency distributions, and calculating the mean of a weighted distribution? How many people feel okay with that? Good. That's all the concepts we've really covered so far. Um, now, we're going to get on to the second characteristic of our data. And that means, Karina, we're going to get set up onto variation. 